Hello class, this is Mr. Lehman. I want to review some concepts and a little bit introduce the calculations for electromagnetic radiation. So let's go. Alright, so some things. Electromagnetic radiation. Uh, remember, they travel as waves through space. And they travel at the speed of light if they're going through a vacuum. Uh, so how fast is that? It is 300 million meters per second. Uh, we typically write that in scientific notation as 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And this is equivalent to about 186,000 miles per second. So light can go around the Earth's equator if it could bend uh, over seven times per second. That's pretty cool. Some different parts of the waves that we talked about and some different measurable properties. Remember the top, the peak of a wave is called the crest. The bottom of a wave is called the trough. Uh, the height of the wave from the midpoint, from the rest position, is called the amplitude, and that measures the intensity. Uh, and then the wavelength, the wavelength is the distance between the top of two waves. It could be the distance from the bottom of two waves as well, from crest to crest or trough to trough. And there's one other property that we talked about in class, and that is frequency. So the frequency of a wave, if you're standing here and the waves are passing by you, if, uh, if you measure how many waves go by a fixed position every second, you get the frequency. Uh, so frequency is how many waves pass a fixed position every second, and we call that, or we, the unit we use for that is hertz, which is how many cycles, how many complete waves pass per second. All right, so uh, we talked about different types of electromagnetic radiation, and uh, we also talked about two other properties of waves. All right, so one property we looked at when we checked out the double slit experiment by Thomas Young is waves will interfere with each other. All right, so when we throw a rock in here and we throw a rock in here, as the waves ripple outward in all directions, when the waves collide in this region, uh, one of two things will happen. Either you're going to have a building effect, or energies will combine and build bigger waves, or they can have a canceling or destructive effect on each other where they weaken each other. And we'll look at pictures on the next slide of that. Another property of waves is that, is that they will diffract. What we mean by that is that as a wave goes through a small opening, on the other side of that small opening, they're going to spread out, uh, whereas particles do not, do not do that. If we throw a baseball through that opening, the baseball is going to keep going straight and hit back here, whereas waves will spread out. Uh, so here's the image of two types of interference. So destructive interference is when the crest will hit the trough. And so the crest and the trough of the two different waves meet, they will have a canceling effect on each other, either making smaller waves or no waves at all. Uh, the second type of interference is constructive, which they build up. Uh, so if the crest of two waves uh, sync up and they meet it together, the energies will combine, and they'll have a cumulative building effect and make a taller wave. All right, different types of electromagnetic radiation. We have radio waves are the longest. And so the symbol we use for wavelength is the letter lambda, Greek letter lambda. So longest waves are on the left side of our spectrum. Uh, the shortest waves, which are gamma rays, are on the right side of our spectrum. And so as we go left to right, if we add energy to the wave, the wave will get shorter. And uh, if the wave gets shorter, the frequency will increase. Uh, the number of waves passing by at 0.1 trees. All right, so uh, there's an inverse relationship between these two properties. So the longer the wave, the lower the frequency. That's probably a better word to use instead of shortest. Sorry about that. Let me change that. So longest waves had the lowest frequency. Shortest waves had the highest frequency. And as we go left to right across here, the energy of the wave, the energy of the photon increases. If we look at light, red light has the longest wavelength, and it has the lowest frequency. Violet light has the shortest wavelength. The waves are closest together. And it has the highest frequency. All right. Which light has the highest energy? Well, there's a direct relationship between frequency and energy. 
And so violet has the most energy out of all the different types of uh, color light. So as wavelength increases, we talked about the inverse relationship. The frequency of the wave will decrease. As waves get closer together, the frequency will increase. So inverse relationship. The formula, how do we figure out? So we know the speed of light through a vacuum is 300 million meters per second. And so the wavelength times the frequency will give you the speed of light. And so if you know one, wavelength or frequency, you can figure out the other by rearranging the formula. If you know the wavelength and you know the speed of light, then you can rearrange the formula and solve for frequency. Frequency would be equal to speed of light divided by the wavelength. Or, if you're solving for wavelength, wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. You just have to make sure that your waves are in meters, otherwise uh, it won't work out right. So calculate the frequency of a 500 nanometer wavelength of light. Well, I know 500 nanometers is equal to billionths of a meter. And so billionths is times 10 to the negative ninth. And so 500 nanometers is equal to 500 billionths of a meter, which looks like that in scientific notation. And so I'm solving for frequency. So frequency, which looks like a V, is Greek letter nu is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. And so you can plug in the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Plug in the wavelength in meters. When you do this in your calculator, I like to put my numbers in scientific notation in parentheses. And then you can solve. talked about this earlier. As frequency goes up, the energy of the wave goes up. So higher frequency waves, the gamma rays, x-rays have higher energy. And then the formula for calculating the energy comes from Pl Max Planck's work. And Max Planck figured out that if you take his constant times the frequency, you can figure out the energy. And then 8 Planck's constant, you might not be able to see it, let me slide this down, is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th uh, joules uh, per second, or joule seconds. And so if we know the frequency, the frequency is 1.52 times 10 to the 13th hertz. We can multiply that frequency by Planck's constant to figure out the energy of the wave. And we could combine the formulas. We can combine our two formulas because both formulas have frequency in them. And so if frequency is equal to speed of light, wrong button, speed of light divided by the wavelength, then we can plug this into the equation for V, or excuse me, frequency, Greek letter nu, and we get energy of a wave is equal to H. Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times speed of light, 300 million meters per second, all over the wavelength. And so if you know the wavelength, you can directly calculate the energy of that wave without finding frequency first. Uh, so I hope this helps. Have a good day.